Okay, so you can see here I have a point impact point, and this is an overhead view, so these are my three walls right here. And so all these different points, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six splatters, six different areas on three walls of spatters. So I can see here on the sides that they're more round in shape, um, right directly in front is round, and as I move away, or the angle, I can see that this is pointing away, so the direction, the tail, this is away, and then as I move over here at the sharpest angle, this is also away. So I can see, and it will tell a picture, or paint a picture, of what actually happened at the crime scene. So I mentioned earlier that we have high, low, and medium velocity, and so based on this, um, knowledge that they learn, anything that's one millimeter or smaller, they can attribute that to gunshot spatter. So this one is an actual bullet hole, and you can see very small, kind of a misting effect, okay? So they would associate that with some kind of gunshot. Um, one thing that the gunshot will do, and hopefully this isn't too graphic for you, I tried to tame this down. So if the bullet is entering whatever object the body Okay, obviously the direction of the force, there's a lot more of the misting that would apply. There's going to be also some back spatter where it makes contact with the object. And it's not as great, but it does tell you the direction that they, the bullet entered into the body. Okay, so that was high. Now this is medium velocity, so anything one to four millimeters and this would be associated with any kind of beating or stabbing. And these are larger individual stains. Now, there will also be some smaller satellite stains around it. Now, they always say that the first blow is the freebie because there's no blood present. Um, so, and sorry if that upsets you or it's a little graphic, but the first blow doesn't really result in these batter because no blood has been um, exposed. So it's usually the second, third, fourth, et cetera, where it starts making the spatter pattern. So this is, um, this is just a demo for lessons, and what they have here is kind of a soaked uh, foam of blood, and this is a bat, and when they hit that, it will spatter, and you see you've got larger dots here. Okay, now what can also fall under the medium velocity is any cast off. So as the uh, object is swinging the weapon, then that's going to make and radiate a pattern. So here are two examples. Um, this is actually cast off patterns on a ceiling, so the weapon was swung above the head. And this was the image I was talking about earlier. Um, just take some time if you need to pause this. So I've got my two walls here, and this is where the origin of um, it took place. And so as I look at the arc of the swing, Okay, so here's my wall. I can see the shape of the droplets. As the weapon moves up and over the head to the ceiling, I have on the angle here, more elliptical blood shape. <clears throat> Directly overhead, excuse me, would be more round, and then moving across in that arc pattern, it would become elliptical again. So from those patterns, staining patterns, I can all you know, go directly to the point of the origin. Okay, and then finally, low velocity, four millimeters or greater. This would be any, if someone's walking, dripping blood, um, larger stains, pool of blood would fall under this category. So these would be my drops. And the diameter, if a drop falls in the same area, then that would make eventually a pool of blood. Okay, now it can be a little deceiving, but if someone coughs out blood to the nose, mouth, et cetera, that would have that misting pattern to it, and so that would assimilate or be similar to a gunshot because of the misting. But they would test that if it mixed with saliva, nasal secretions, then that would be associated with ex expiratory blood stain pattern. So anything that's expired through the mouth um, would fall under that. But by testing for the saliva, then they would know that it was in this tip of particular bloodstain pattern. Now, I was debating whether or not to put this on here. This would be from arterial gush, another type of pattern. And that would be if a knife incident and they made a slit across the throat and hit an arterial vein, 
um, it would give a spraying pattern, and you can tell the direction. So the longer drops, larger drops would pool and run down. Okay, uh, so we kind of talked about how it fell off of patterns. Now we're going to look at once a blood stain or a pool has been established, now they can look at impressions, um, footprints walking through, contact. So contact would be a shoe print. If the hair moved across it, they call that a swipe. So anything that's a transfer from the blood drop or the pool onto another surface. So they can determine the paths either by the victim is running a particular direction or the assailant by following the pattern or the trail. Okay, now blood will have a tendency to coagulate or clot over time, and they can determine when the crime took place by knowing how fast or how far along the drop has um, dried. I thought this was a really good um, kind of why do they even look at the patterns? So I'm going to read this to you, so you need to pause it and not listen to me. Uh, since 1984, this particular sheriff has become an expert in kind of the blood stain pattern analysis. And the reason why they look at this is the blood stain patterns will help the investigators understand the positions and the means by which the victim and suspect moved, interacted, struggled through the crime scene. So they can actually go back and paint a picture. And a lot of times they will use this in a court of law to help um, kind of paint the picture for the jury of what really happened. With an understanding of what and how things occurred, and they use this through physics, biology, chemistry, investigators can focus and find foot, fingerprints, footprints, hairs, fibers, and other forms of trace evidence just based on the spatter of the blood. The assessment of bloodstain patterns will also limit the need to collect an overabundance of redundant blood sample for DNA, because it does take a long time to process that. Furthermore, a reconstruction of the scene helps the investigators determine which of the witnesses and suspects is telling the truth or lying. So I thought that was kind of a wrap up of why it's so important to understand the physics, biology, chemistry of a blood system or blood stain analysis. So hopefully that helped and we're, hopefully you do go back and read those three documents I put on Moodle and you can take a look at this again if you need to, but we are going to do some of this in our labs. So thank you very much.